The Yu-Gi-Oh! end of match procedures. Ha <laughs> ha! No one fucking likes them. And if you do, well then, more power to you. But I've talked about on multiple occasions how I have been cheated out of those time rules, specifically in the last regional I went to in Boca Raton, Florida, where I had a Sky Striker player cheat me because of fucking time, and he just wanted to stall, just like I've seen a lot of other people do because of these time rules. So I found an article online that seems to fix those rules, and I think it's a really good idea. So let's dive on into it, shall we? Try to relax your anus. Destroy the ever living boo 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 stain out of that subscribe button because we're only 30. That's right, three zero subscribers away from 1,000 subscribers. So smash it so you can be part of the Avery Army and hit that ding dong Taco Bell notification bell so that we can go get ourselves a five dollar box from Taco Bell and you can be the first to know we got new videos up on the channel. So I really appreciate all the support, all jokes aside from the bottom of my heart. Truly, it really does mean the world to me. So I was looking online just seeing what was going on in the Yu-Gi-Oh world. Sometimes I just like to browse, see what people are talking about on Reddit and things like that. And there is a website that I go to from time to time, especially whenever I'm doing research for like the Yu-Gi-Oh retrospectives, and it's called YGO Pro Deck. I'm gonna leave a link to this time ruling thing. I'm gonna leave a link to this article discussing the time rules in Yu-Gi-Oh in the description. That's what I'm trying to say. And what this guy talks about is a way to fix the time rules and current issues that we have with the time rules. I'm sure that you've seen it before if you've gone to a locals or any competitive event, whether it's a regional, YCS, nationals, what have you. Once you hit the end of time, you got to end that current phase. So if your opponent has more life points than you, then they just may be making sure that they really understand your cards or really making sure that they make the right play. Or they're like my cocksucker opponent in uh, the Boca Raton Regional playing Sky Striker. How the fuck he was 3-0? Probably because he was a cheating cocksucker. And with 30 seconds left on the clock, he goes, oh, they just made an announcement. That's time. <laughs> and no, no. Pieces of shit like that need to be banned out of the game. But I digress. You want to hear me talk about that? Go watch my worst regional ever sprite deck profile video. Um, so let's talk about how to fix the time rules. So I'm going to read some snippets of this article to you. And then we'll discuss. First, round times are driven by the slowest table. This sounds obvious, but it pays to stop and think about it for a moment. From an event running perspective, we care less about how long most tables take, but care a lot about how long the slowest table takes, which leads us to second, event times are typically driven up by outlier tables. I think we've all been there. It's round eight or nine on day one of a YCS. Everyone just wants to get it over with and go home. The wall clock is currently showing 67 minutes overtime, and there are two judges standing guard at table 728. It might only have Happen once or twice in an event, but it's costing you an hour each time. Third, outlier tables are often caused by investigations. Now, this isn't always true, but if a table loses 10 minutes to a deck check, then goes the full distance, finally, you end up with the head judge needing to investigate the potential stalling at the end. That's a ready-made recipe for one of these nightmare tables from earlier. So having established these basic assumptions, let's have a look at the incentives driving players as time approaches. He goes on to say here that essentially at high-level events, players want to do everything within their power to win. Some may even bend the rules a little bit. Um, but one part that I want to mention here is that he makes a good point about the time as a whole. Like he says here, I want to pose it that the turn player typically controls the pace of gameplay. While Yu-Gi-Oh is a two-player game and many cards let you interact with your opponent's turn, the turn player is still the one taking most actions. This is true. Therefore, they're basically in control of the clock. He says here, the current end of match procedure ends the duel after the current phase, as we talked about. In other words, if the turn player plays slowly and delays ending their turn, they're taking a chance to take play away from their opponent. And then once you realize this is an issue, the solution seems almost too simple. You simply let the duel continue until the end of the next turn. Ding, 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 ding. End of the next turn. That is fucking perfect. Rather than the end of the current turn, now if the turn player plays slowly, they're taking away their own next turn. If they play faster and manage to complete their turn before time is called, they gain an extra turn. This simple tweak has completely flipped the incentive structure of end of match procedures on its head. The turn player is now rewarded rather than penalized. For faster play, of course, this is not without issue. Uh, he goes on to say here at the very end, uh, 
In review, it's becoming apparent that they produce an undesirable incentive structure. Players are rewarded for violating the rules and playing slowly. I argue that this is a design flaw and can be remedied. By having the duel continue until the end of the next turn, the incentive structure is reversed and the turn player is rewarded for progressing the game faster. I argue that the extra time taken with proper slow play enforcement would be outweighed by the time saved on investigations. This makes for a net positive for both players and event organizers. This is fucking perfect because think about it if you're playing against me right and i'm playing fucking tier element and i'm popping the fuck off and milling 300 000 cards out of my deck you know i need to be able to resolve those chains quickly enough especially if there's only like a minute and a half or even 60 seconds left on the clock because the longer i take to do that unless i'm able to like let's say otk you i am literally losing a turn because now if time's called and it's my turn i have to pass turn and you're in the driver's seat you have to either get higher life points than me or you just got to OTK me. Now, you could make the argument that if I can make a big enough board that you can't run over or like you have to use Dark Ruler to out and then I'm not taking any damage anyway, that can pose some issues. But yet, if that was happening, you probably weren't going to win anyway. And so I think being able to be in a situation where until the end of the next turn fixes a majority of the issues that we currently have with the time rules. You know, you hear people getting into arguments over like, okay, ending the current phase. Well, I'm in draw phase and I have a card I can play and all this other shit. And it's like, it, it just creates toxicity. Like one of the stories I told in my Sprite deck profile when I originally did it uh, after the Book of Return Regional, I talked about how I played against a lot of Rogue. In round one, I played against some Earth Machine, Vernalizer, Therion, dog shit deck. Like it was... It was fucking table 500 shit. Well, when time gets called, he says, did you have any other plays because you seem to play that kind of slow? I'm like, bitch, motherfucker, you read my Sprite Elf four goddamn times and you said you only play against this shit online. Are you fucking kidding me? You read it three times in game one and then you took 15 minutes for your first goddamn turn in game one just to read Sprite Elf a fourth fucking time on your turn? Go fuck yourself. Like, seriously, that shit is just fucking idiotic. You shouldn't have to read a card four goddamn times to understand how the fuck it works. That's your own fucking problem. Being able to have it go until the next turn, if my opponent's in the driver's seat and they want to take all that goddamn time and it's turn one and you can't fucking attack, then you're screwed, pimp. Especially if you go into game two and I already got game one, well, now you got to get my life points lower than yours. you got to get yours higher than mine so that the game's a draw unless I can get your life points lower than mine on my next turn with these new time rules. I mean... To me, there have just been so many issues with these time rules for so long now. And I feel like Konami really hasn't touched this because they feel like that this is just like the best possible solution. And when you look at it from an event organizer perspective, which this article does talk about, I just didn't mention it. You know, if you're renting out a space, like, you know, you're renting out a convention center for a YCS, and, you know, you say it's only going to be for two days from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And you've got all these fucking Yu-Gi-Oh! players in the room at after fucking midnight trying to, like, play a Flunder Mirror. And you've got the five turns instead of just ending the current phase. Uh, yeah, no, like, that's some baby back bullshit. And Konami probably saw that writing on the wall and they're like, we, we, we got to fix this shit. At the same time, I also feel like it's just an overall bad idea that they need to walk back. And this wouldn't be the first time that they would have walked back an idea if they were to walk this back or even change it in some way. Because we saw that years ago when they were trying to shove the fucking battle packs down our goddamn throats because they wanted us to draft so bad. Like, they saw the success. They must have seen, I should say, the success that Magic the Gathering had with drafting. And they're like, oh, hey, let's do this for the top of a YCS. And people were like, Fuck that. Like, that is literally the definition of luck. If out of your, like, five or ten whatever the fuck battle packs and you get dog shit out of all ten packs, how the fuck are you going to make a deck out of that? Like, no one wanted to deal with that shit. And Konami finally reversed and they said, yeah, no, fuck this. We're not drafting anymore in the top eight of a YCS or any big event. Let's just have you play your, your normal decks. And then it became a matter of just in the grand scheme of things, it was like, okay, so this guy won the YCS. They were playing fucking drafting, which again is idiotic as hell. But yet his main deck he was playing was, let's say, Runic, right? 
But then people would have to say, okay, what was the most represented deck? Tier Element. Okay, then Tier Element's the best deck. It's not Runic. Like, the guy just got lucky in draft. Like, that's that's literally what the top became of what you decided was the best deck. Or you just looked at the regional circuit because people didn't give a fuck to watch the YCSs because it was just all drafting. You know, who the fuck wants to see Manticore of Darkness versus a fucking Beaver Warrior in the finals of a YCS? Like, that's not real Yu-Gi-Oh. It's, it's fucking not. No one wants to see that shit. Yeah, it's cool if you're like an anime fan or something, but... No, this is this is real life. No one liked the battle pack idea. So I think that having it go to the next turn is just would fix more issues than issues it would cause, in my opinion. This is a fantastic article. I urge you to go read it. Again, link is going to be down below in the description. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Is there something I'm just totally not thinking about that I'm missing? Because I personally am so tired of just the ending of the current phase. Like, how many times have you been cucked out of a win? because it's the end of the current phase. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you again so much for all the support. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video.